I'll hand you over to Richard before this gets too out of control, and uh, he's going to talk about APIs and efficiency. So, start taking notes. Imagine I told you about that. Uh, yeah, I'm going to talk about APIs and efficiency, hopefully to help you make your lives easier. Uh, you can do that with source and slide changes. And uh, that's just the generic picture of the page that I did. Uh, if they don't know me, that's me, that's my Twitter. Uh, I work for OMD, who are a media agency in London. Um, but I work from home because I basically do go and fight uh, link audits, analytics audits, um, anything that can be done without having to face a client, basically. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, I used to work for uh, Occupants Marketing and Dog Digital, who you probably know more than OMD because they're Swatch companies rather than a uh, London based agency. Um, what is an API is always a good place to start, to, just in case anyone doesn't know. Um, there's a Wikipedia definition there, but essentially it's a way of getting data from pieces of software easier. Um, if you have a piece of software you want to use, it has all the data there, and it effectively works as kind of an inter interlinking way of getting that data down. Um, why use them? Um, basically, a lot of people do mundane tasks over and over again, and without any real thought on why they're doing it, or if there's any way they can actually make it more efficient, um, and overuse me, but it's generally what people do, they just kind of carry on and bang their head against the wall doing the same repetitive task over and over again. So we don't want to do that. Uh, want to use them so you can maximize efficiency, so you're not wasting time downloading loads of data manually from tools online. Uh, you want to make it customized so that you actually want to present it, data or anything in a way that you actually want to use it um, and reduce frustration because, believe me, doing the same tasks over and over again just becomes um, frustrating, it uh, annoys staff and it's just not a good thing and not a good place to be in. Um, first obvious most use uh, most obvious use of using APIs is reporting. Um, Google Analytics has an API, it's free to use and there's no reason not to be using it. Um, most people's reporting is rubbish because it takes <laughs> way too long to produce. A, I mean I'm sure it's not the case now, but the first company I worked for used to it used to take 10 days to produce a monthly reports and because it was all just kind of manual. You just kind of go in, this is before Google Analytics, believe it or not, um, using a program called WebStat, which I think was like £10 a month or something. And it was terrible, but it was all online, the data was there, and it was just a case of uh, putting it into a customised Word document and that's got sent off. But the actual kind of compiling of all the information took 10 days for the amount of clients that it had and it's just a complete waste of time. Um, most of the time your clients won't even bother to read it, so you know they're paying money for something that's not really of any use to them. And also, and, uh, uh, carrying on that from that point, the time can be spent elsewhere um, doing something that's actually going to improve um, their website, their rankings, their traffic. Uh, Google Analytics API has a few uses. Um, you can actually use the API to customize data collection. It doesn't have to be a website. You can actually use it for mobile apps. Um, that's one example. Um, you can actually use it to configure your analytics account directly through the API, uh, and obviously customize reporting, which is what we're focusing on. Hey. This, I'm not going to go into the nitty gritty of how it actually works or how which scripts you can use to, to use generate um, data from your Google Analytics API, but Google itself has lots and lots of tutorials online, and um, I'm sure there's other resources out with Google that actually have how you can actually use the Google Analytics API. Um, the tutorials from Google themselves are Java, Python, PHP, and JavaScript. So if you know any of those languages, it's easy enough to. Uh, copy and paste and get started on it. Um, all the data is going in a raw format. Um, you, it's not kind of 
you don't just use the API, get the data, and, and then actually done. Um, you actually have to then interact with the data somehow. Uh, two obvious ways, online and offline. Offline, not technically offline, because you're using an API to call. But you'll see what I mean in a second. Um, so you basically create the API using some sort of script that you've generated. Um, the script will then be part of kind of a um, format. This is the online method. So you effectively generate um, an analytics report on the fly using HTML markup, however you want it, make it all customized. Um, uh, question mark, question mark, profit. The only problem with using this method, of course, is um, I'm not really a big, massive fan of having online reports for clients because it, you give them the link and will they actually use it? At least if you're sending them an offline report, then you know, they're being sent and they might open it and have a quick browse or whatever. Um, but if you have everything online, it, you can make it look really nice and make it nice and fancy and make it lovely. Um, <coughs> first, my first experience with using APIs was using a tool called Excellent Analytics. Um, it's not free, unfortunately. There is a, another tool similar, but I don't find it quite as powerful. I think it is free. Um, it's the fact I've actually used the wrong thing. So actually, Next Analytics, that I'm thinking of, Excellent Analytics is a free one, um, one way or the other. And we've actually got an example here. Uh, this is one good thing about the package is it actually comes with a load of dashboards um, that you can actually use for your own purposes. You just have to kind of customize a few fields like uh, your um, obviously your login details and it obviously has to um, have some sort of credentials to actually get into the analytics API. Um, and it kind of adds a little bit into your Excel and, and the ribbon and you can actually just um, click literally click a button and it will update your spreadsheet. And so this 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 entire screen here um, will all update automatically itself each month. Um, you just hit the button and boom, that's it, done. Um, and these are all just conditional formatting to kind of show uh, traffic, whether it's gone, let's say it's similar, gone up, gone down, um, with a kind of fancy graph and say in Excel you can present your data in however you want. So if you've, uh, yeah, just to say it's not a D report, as I say, it's just kind of one I produced myself using um, a few of the kind of custom dashboards that kind of ma mashed it all up together. Um, and it saved an awful lot of time. Uh, so when you're using the Google Analytics API, uh, do use segmentation. Um, anyone that doesn't use segmentation analytics is wasting their time. Um, especially when you're reporting SEO. Because you can have, you can, if you're reporting total traffic, then there's just so many different variations of why that's going to be happening. Well, why your traffic's gone up. It might have absolutely nothing to do with what you've been doing. So always segment at least using non-brand organic traffic. Um, it's easy enough to add a kind of regular expression to filter out your branded tra traffic and see you know, what your work is actually doing and see the non-brand traffic increase. That's what you want. Uh, always make your reports cl uh, clean and clear. There's just, it's like you know, kind of the infographics you get these days online. Just this, just data presented in a terrible way that doesn't make any sense whatsoever. It actually makes things more difficult. It's, it just makes it takes information that makes it more difficult to understand. You know, the, a simple pie chart makes way more sense than a big, massive, fancy thing. Um, make reports return on investment heavy because ultimately that's what your clients are paying you for is to increase the amount of business they get. Um, there's no there's no good telling them that they got like five more visits from Twitter and it's like great that they're driving business. It's all about how, how much revenue you're generating for them. Um, make them interactive as well, you know. Um, there's ways you can use Excel, uh, use Visual Basic um, to make charts you can actually have drop down menus and you can actually change the months and uh, you can do the same if you were doing a kind of online method as well. Make it interactive, make the client actually want to kind of play around with it. Uh, don't include things because they're pretty. It doesn't really wash if it's just including something just because it looks nice. If it doesn't mean anything, then what's the point? Um, and don't simply replicate the Google Analytics inter interface because you can just set up your own custom dashboard and Google Analytics and save it to PDF. 
um, make it actually worthwhile, make, make it worth your time you, you spent and invested on using the UK API. Um, don't bombard clients with huge walls, huge walls of text. Yes, you need to explain them, their things to them, but you need to explain things clearly. There's no point in just saying, here's a nice graph, this is what it means, and the graphs, uh, sorry, the text is much bigger than the actual graph itself. And don't include anything that still requires manual input, because the whole point of using the API is to make your life easier and to make things efficient. Um, I have seen it before where you've kind of had, um, had all this kind of API going on, and then someone said, oh, can we add this? And it's like, no, because it takes more time and doesn't really add any value. <coughs> uh, Adalyze is the next obvious one. Um, the two main uses of it to kind of fuel dynamic paid search management, if you, um, you could use the API to uh, link up to your um, database to see if you've got stock, and that way you're not presenting ad ads. Um, if there's no stock available of a product, then you, there's no point having an advert for it because they're going to click through and say, oh, you're out of stock. There's no point, I'll just go back. Um, and obviously, the traffic estimator keyword tool, which is the main aim of SEOs. Uh, the problem is, AdWords API is actually a bit of a nightmare to get hold of. Um, we require a, an MCC account, um, which not everyone has, especially you know, freelancers. Um, you also need to apply for the API token and meet the kind of required sort of minimum functionality of Google, um, and it also costs money. Uh, you can actually, if you do have my uh, uh, sorry, AdWords API, um, Richard Bax, the SEO gadget, actually created an AdWords plugin. You can basically just kind of automatically go into Excel, insert it, like equals, um, I can't remember, um, it's like keyword volume or something like that, and. Um, it'll look up the cell and bang, that's it, you've got the kind of keyword volume there. Um, it's quite easy to break, but um, <laughs> it's, it's a really nice feature and, and it saves you a lot of time going through, um, going through the interface because the AdWords uh, keyword tool interface is the easiest to use if you're trying to create lots and lots and lots of um, keyword lists. Um, Another cool tool that you can combine with that is called RKG Duck. Um, I think it's mostly kind of more for paid search, but it does actually have kind of some semantic analysis and it will kind of group similar keywords. Um, it takes a little bit of customization to set up, but it will kind of help you kind of whittle down the keyword list. Uh, no API token. Um, then there are tools, uh, I quite often use Market Samurai, it's not, um, it's not that expensive, I think it's about £89 pounds, like, for lifetime. Um, it does a whole load of other things as well, but it is quite good for just kind of dumping a load of keywords and it will kind of use the AdWords API to dump <coughs> the, um, the, the keyword volume. And SEM Rush is another really good one. You can't dump a list, list of keywords, but it will give you kind of the top keywords for, um, for your website and competitors and also give you kind of where they are actually ranking as well. It's a really, really useful tool that I think is kind of undervalued by a lot of people. Uh, link tools, uh, the other kind of obvious one. Uh, no matter how pretty they are, um, uh, I think Ahrefs is kind of the new big one that people seem to be raving about. And yes, the interface is really nice, but ultimately if you're trying to get somewhere and you're trying to, push, um, to do a link audit and you kind of you know exactly what kind of metrics you want to get from it. No matter how pretty the interface is, it's still time consuming. Um, any kind of default exports from these tools also include a lot of junk that is just not necessary. Um, Majestic's really bad for it. Um, you always end up with about like twelve columns on the end of each of the export <laughs> of the link. Um, and customization is to say there's lots of link metrics that people that most of them don't even touch on or it involves some sort of extra analysis that you need to do. So using the API can make your time a lot better spent because you just kind of get it all in one place, how is it you want it. Um, and also, um, if you're kind of recording this data, then you can record changes over time. Most of the will only have kind of the volume of links over time, whereas you might want to do something a bit more meaningful than that. Um, kind of like maybe the amount of specific anchor text over time uh, and see how that increases. Uh, so your API choices are, as I've just got the three main ones, Majestic SEO, SEO models, and AHrefs. Um, 
the cheapest one is actually AA address, but I don't think you get very much for $79 a month. Um, SEO models is actually really expensive using how crap their tool is. Um, just the SEO would be my choice. Um, I own the we've got a platinum account, which is 250 pounds a month, which isn't bad for what you get. Um, and there there obviously are cheaper versions of all of these tools, but they don't allow you to access the API. So just a few kind of extra examples of um, why you would use the API. Link diversity, you know, kind of the amount of um, different websites. Um, you get a lot of times you get kind of site wide links. Um, a site wide link isn't as useful as I know you can get that through unique IPs, but um, and also kind of diverse in terms of um, what type of site they are. Um, a few of these kind of might actually intertwine, but IP diversity as well, because obviously the network sites um, will be easy to spot as well. Uh, Links that have page rank, because obviously you get a lot of links that are just kind of on unranked pages, um, especially if you've got lots of directories and stuff. Um, uh, common URLs between, uh, if you've got, um, you're doing a competitor analysis and you're seeing a lot of uh, uh, competitors that have the same links from the same places. Um, geographical spread, because if you're, especially if you're kind of local focused, it's going to have a lot of localized links, so you want to see actually where where these links are coming from. Um, anchor distribution uh, kind of speaks for itself, you know, you don't want to overdo um, the amount of specific anchor texture and kind of vary it between um, brands and non-brand combined um, variations, different semantic terms for each link. Um, brand versus non-brand, which is one of the I'm a big fan of, um, the amount of branded links you have versus the amount of non-branded links you have. Um, link type, uh, link dex does it, um, kind of breaks down your, your link profile into directories, articles, um, footer links, that kind of thing. Um, that's really, really nice to see. Um, I don't actually think link dex is worth money just for that graph, but um, that's about, I think we had a trial of it and I think that's about the only thing I actually used. Um, Link churn, how many times is this going to report over time? How many links you get that are actually kind of disappearing fairly quickly? Um, obviously, toxic links, eh? You think it's kind of linking to on the same, on the same page to kind of porn, Viagra, that sort of thing. Um, and obviously, the kind of documentation of this, um, a lot of, when I do a link audit, it's always just kind of same metrics that I'm looking to kind of get into one place, and I want them in a, in a chart that is exactly so I can just copy it from the data dump straight into the document that I'm writing and that way I can kind of do the analysis on it rather than have to you know, go into the thing, find the metric, put it into Excel, then paste it across. It just saves so much time. Um, if you don't have access to, as I say, they are quite expensive to get access to kind of link to a, um, APIs. Uh, uh, some of these will cost as well, uh, unfortunately, but SEO and Mozilla Labs, there's quite a few nifty tools in there. Um, the SEO Mozilla Labs tools are actually better than the actual main tool itself, I think. Um, link research tools, again, cost money, but there are some kind of, um, neat little things um, in there. SEO tools for Excel is a godsend, um, not just for um, link data. Um, I think it uses SEO analytics, um, which I think you actually need to pay for an API key as well to use it within the SEO tools for Excel uh, tool. But it also does kind of things like scraping and um, it will gather page rank, page title, uh, meta keywords and stuff straight into Excel so you can save a lot of time. Um, Bright Local is not necessarily API related, but I've kind of included it in there because um, a, lot, a lot of companies, especially local companies, will want to be looking at um, citations for um, like Google Local, Google Places, um, and it has a, quite a few tools for like, <coughs> citation tracker, I think it's called, um, and it will kind of go and crawl your Bright Link profile like, specifically for ones that are kind of local related and tell you which sites that you don't appear on and that way you can go and approach them and get the citations yourself. Um, Link Detective is one set by a guy called Epi Vault, who's an American guy. Um, it's kind of got a couple of nifty graphs that, and it's relatively cheap. And uh, the checks in the mail, Chris. Uh, link building toolbar. Um, <laughs> save you a bit, bit of time when you're actually kind of going through 
uh, the web and just um, you see a site and it can, it can gather um, stuff from Majestic straight away. Um, and you can also record, you know, um, if you want to go back to anything that's not worthwhile. Or if you, and then when you visit again, you can see that, oh, this has already been visited, so and so has added a link. It's a pretty nifty tool. Um, just a few examples. This is Link Detective. Um, when I was talking about, say, you get a free account, but I think you can have one site, and I think it's something like 5,000 URLs. Um, it kind of gives you a breakdown of links by type, so you've got uh, most of them unknown. It's, it uses the SEO model, so you basically go into SEO models, download the CSV, and then upload it to this. Um, and that's another way you could kind of, um, kind of have a, if you wanted to use an API, you could kind of do it in the same way, where you just use a CSV dump, when you don't need to kind of program anything really, really, really intricate. Um, so you've got unknown dead directory links, forum posts, put to an article sidebar, profile advertisement. So you can see exactly how, um, what type of sites you're getting. I mean, most of the time, if you're looking at a spag profile, it's going to be articles, but uh, I did it for a client, so I've kind of mirrored out the, blanked out the um, actual anchor text, but it kind of gives you a specific anchor text breakdown as well. And considering the price, it's, it's worth having a look. Uh, this is just the, the kind of uh, ribbon for SEO tools themselves. So you've got on-page content. Um, it does, it's got analytics, but it never seems to work for me. I don't know why. Um, we've also got networking. If you're a domain, you can also get kind of who is details straight into Excel as well. Um, uh, for social, if you're looking to see, you know, uh, you just want to put in a page and or a website and see how many times it's been liked, tweeted, and whatnot. Um, all that stuff that Andrew was talking about. Um, then social prolytics is quite a good tool, um, and I believe there's a kind of a free option for that one. Uh, and it's got a non-API efficiency. Obviously, APIs help, but it's not the only way to be more efficient. Um, technical audits. Yeah, I know it's not content marketing. <laughs> bit old school. Um, but you know, I'm going to go into a rant, but I still think a lot of people forget that technical audits are actually Quite, it's still quite an important part of what, what, <laughs> what you're supposed to be doing. Um, to use a, an, uh, to coin an analogy that I learned from Mark Money, uh, the kind of technical audit side of things is kind of like keeping the engine, you know, and the links kind of like the fuel can keep the website going. I like that. Um, it's never going to be possible to kind of get a tool that's going to audit a site for you. Let's face it, it's, it's quite a mundane task, and you always have to go in and kind of. Um, spot the errors yourself. Um, but I kind of use a few of these tools kind of as a kind of starting block to just kind of get a few of the, kind of the main easy issues to spot it quickly. Um, one's your URI Valley. Um, it's kind of a little bit simple. It's not the best designed thing in the world, but it does give you a quick snapshot of um, things like page, how long is the size they can download, um, individual elements of the page as well. Um, Woo rank is a little bit yeah, but again, it kind of um, <laughs> it will pick up um, certain things like an archivalization, little little things that you know you could easily spot looking at a site. But then it's just one thing you're looking at. This just can give you lots of the little tiny things on one screen. Um, Built with is another one I really really like because it kind of tells you if you um, what it's uh, hosted on is it WordPress, is it a Windows server, is it a Linux server, um, Apache. If you want to be correct. Um, and also why slow and web page test for the kind of the page speed kind of things. Um, why slow is just kind of the Firefox um, plugin for uh, Firebug, and you basically just go onto the site, click run test, and it'll tell you exactly what's slow the page now. That's pretty nifty. Um, and web page test will actually give you kind of, if we go that a little bit further. You can actually get a video. Um, you can put your site and three competitors. I'll actually give you a video of them kind of running and how quickly it takes to load each one, um, as well as kind of a kind of waterfall kind of model of your page loading. Uh, this one's built with here, so I've got SEOProsco.com. Um, it's got Webmaster Tools. It's an Apache server it's using WordPress. Uh, it's just pretty quick. Uh, this one's Woo Rank, so you can see um, this does well, although it doesn't have an XML sign up. Really um, your URLs look clean and the www, the non www version resolves um, or redirects correctly. Um, 
this is the waterfall view that I was talking about. Um, as you can actually see, it's not particularly great because the green bit is timed to first bite, so that's effectively how long the server takes to respond. So you can see exactly just how far if your server is performing really badly, which seems to be here. Um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> My brother's got a very popular site on it. <laughs> it's taken 10 gigs so, much, so far this month, so I've got a problem. <laughs> uh, and the blue bit is a content download, so you can see. Uh, there's a jQuery JavaScript there that could quite happily be reduced because it's taking over a second to load. Um, just for a nice simple breakdown of how your site loads and what you can do to improve it. Um, other technical improvements. Um, personally, I prefer to do technical audits in PowerPoint. I think it takes less time because you're not having to write loads of guff about how what this issue is and you know how to resolve it in massive detail that a client's going to just going to go straight over the head, means nothing. If you do it in PowerPoint, you can make it visual, you can actually tell them, you know, this is the this is a problem, uh, this is why it's a problem, and this is how to resolve it. That's that's what you want, and you want the client to understand. You want the client to understand because it's more likely that they're going to push through a change that they think, oh yeah, I can definitely see how this could be a problem. Um, you also want to focus on the things that are actually going to really make a difference as well. Um, the problem with doing a technical audit, you can actually get stuck down a rabbit hole and be like, oh, this is a problem, this is a problem. But you want to focus on the things that are actually going to really make a difference and prioritize those, have those at the start of the presentation, not the end when they've got bored. I'm going to say, you know, these are, these are the things we really want to, to get changed and hopefully that will help push them through. Um, my aim, I don't know whether to get there, but is to kind of create a tool that will you just go onto a website or a page and then you can just kind of add it in any imagery and make it kind of customised to the client and that would save me a lot of time. Who wants to make that then? Um, so the ultimate goal of all of this is never have to spend time gathering data because that just takes up a lot of time. Um, gives you more time to actually analyse what's going on with the client's website. Um, you get better results for your client and you minimize bullshit. That's it. Faithful, yeah. Um, bonus slide, um, one of my colleagues.